Hey, what's up? It's Deanna. And so tonight I'm going to show you uh, one of my dolls in my collection. And honestly, I rarely ever collect replica antique dolls. And the reasoning for that is because I'd rather have the real thing. Who wouldn't, right? But then again, there are some dolls that are so expensive. They're thousands upon thousands of dollars. And if you're like me, you'll never be able to afford one of them. So what else is there to do but to buy a replica? And for me to buy a replica, it has to be really, really, really good. Otherwise, forget it. So one night I was searching eBay and I saw this doll. And I first, at first glance, I thought it was an antique French brew doll. And antique French brew dolls can sell for quite a bit of money. Thousands upon thousands of dollars. Some of them as much as ten to $15,000. And so this is a brew and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, J-N-E, uh, I don't know, I can't pronounce that. I don't know what the J-N-E stands for, but I believe that was the certain model. And so these dolls, as some of you may know, could sell for like ten to $15,000. And I will never be one of those people that will probably ever be able to afford it. Most antique reproduction dolls are just god-awful. And I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but... I noticed on most of those antique reproduction dolls, the eyebrows are always way off. And uh, the artist never, ever, ever makes them as uh, good as the real ones. And as you can see, actually, this particular doll has awesome, beautiful, painted antique style um, eyebrows. Let me try to get the hair out of the way. And uh, this was done really well. Let me try to get it out of the glare. And now you could probably see it better. And it was done really, really well. Generally, that's the problem. Like uh, doll um, doll makers, like the people that like to make um, artist dolls, never, ever, ever get that right. And another thing they don't get right is the eyelashes and the mouth and even the coloring. I see a lot of them that have very, very bad cheek coloring. And so, nonetheless, I saw this on an eBay auction. And it was at a very reasonable price. It was under $50. And I just had to have it. And it is absolutely exquisite. Now, I didn't even care who the artist was. That made no difference to me. Now, most collectors of artist dolls look for specific artists. And they only buy from those specific artists. And there are not too many that I like. And then the ones that I do like sell for hundreds upon hundreds of dollars. Some as high as six, seven hundred dollars. So I cannot afford that. So that's not something um, I've ever thought of even adding to my collection. If I'm going to spend six to seven hundred dollars for an antique doll replica or artist doll, guess what? I'm just going to buy an antique doll. So nonetheless, uh, this one is marked Cali Lou. So it's spelled C A L L I space L O U. And I had no idea who that was. So I looked it up on the internet, and it has a nifty story. So Callie Lou was um, her, actually her real name. Callie Lou was just a harmonica. It was like a name that she just used um, on her dolls. But her real name was Neva Wade Garnet. Her mother was Clara Wade. And the nifty story behind this is that Clara Wade worked for the Humpty Dumpty Doll Circus um, Hospital. Actually, the Humpty Dumpty Doll Hospital. Her mother was uh, actually making dolls um, and was an assistant to, uh, what was her name? Emma Clear. And Emma Clear owned the Humpty Dumpty Doll Hospital. And in 1888, Emma Clear started repairing dolls and producing doll clothes. Then she started by opening the Humpty Dumpty Clinic in Buffalo, New York. In 1908, she started with the Humpty Dumpty Clinic in New York. Then in 1917, she started with the Humpty Dumpty Clinic in Los Angeles. So she was basically restoring antique dolls. <laughs> Back then, they weren't so antique. But um, in 1938, she advertised the Jenny Lin doll. And that was her first China head doll. And then she began, she was so good at repairing antique dolls that she began making replicas of those antique dolls and she was one of the first doll artists making reproduction dolls and she made the most exquisite 
exquisite dolls that is so hard to tell her versions from the real ones that if you didn't see the marking or her uh, incised signature on the back of these dolls' heads, you would think they were real. Now, one of her trusted employees of many, many years was Clara Wade. And while Clara Wade's daughter, Neva Wade Garnet, was in diapers, she spent every single day with her mother at the Humpty Dumpty Doll Clinic while her mother was making dolls and fixing dolls. And so she just, from an infant, watched her mom make these incredible dolls with um, Clara Wade. And uh, so she learned her mother's craft and it was in her blood. So now this is one of her dolls and these are highly, highly collected. Highly collected because they're so exquisite. And Neva Wade Garnet, otherwise known as Callie Lou, actually when she made her dolls, she used the finest, finest materials. She's made many doll books. I believe she's no longer alive. She made many doll books for uh, reproductionists on how to make these uh, replicas that looked so realistic to the antique versions. Um, and she's uh, known, she's world renowned. And uh, so when she used the materials to make these dolls, she used the finest materials. So for example, this brew replica has human hair. So the wig is absolutely phenomenal. A lot of times she even used antique materials to make these dolls, including antique hand-blown glass eyes, uh, fabrics for the clothing, the shoes, and the accessories. Um, she also used... Um, antique fabrics in this dress as you can see here and she used gorgeous gorgeous materials to make these leather shoes and their boots and they have little tassels I don't know if you could see that with antique shoe buttons she actually used antique shoe buttons for these shoes and this doll is from top to bottom exquisite she um, put layers and layers and layers of outfits underneath like underwear actually underneath this antique version of the brew doll. And uh, it was like she did not skimp on anything when she made her dolls. And every single one of them, now she did not make millions of the, you know, hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of the same exact doll. While she did make other brew replicas, every single one of them was different. So it's not like those mass produced home shopping network dolls like you see on QVC or the Home Shopping Network and like, you know, from contemporary doll artists. And I noticed those type of dolls are the worst ones to collect if you're looking for an investment over the years. Um, they mass produce them. They make sometimes tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand or more of these dolls. And then they get flooded. The market gets flooded with them. And uh, for example, you'll see thousands of certain dolls on eBay and the most that people can sell them for is nine, ten dollars, maybe even twenty dollars. After people paid hundreds of dollars for them, for example, like the Franklin Mint uh, type of do collectible dolls, you spend one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty dollars for those dolls, and you'll see hundreds of them on eBay, not even selling for nine or ten or twenty dollars. So, nonetheless, I just wanted to show you this beautiful, beautiful Cali Lou, um, aka Neva Wade Garnet Brew replica doll. And I hope you enjoyed her. And once again, thanks for watching. And if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe.